Hello everybody, it's Marshall, back with another video. In this video, we're just going to be going over all of the amazing things that I got during the Pokemon Go tour. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Well, first, let's go over what I did during the event. In 12 hours, I caught 1,449 Pokemon, meaning I caught an average of 120.75 Pokemon per hour for 12 hours. After the event was over, so between 9 and midnight, I did catch enough to make it to 1,500 Pokemon even on the day. Well, I'm sure I've done it before, this was the first time that I've ever directly recorded myself catching over a thousand Pokemon in one day. So it was really cool to be able to have concrete evidence of that. I also earned 688,845 XP from the event alone, including the evolutions that I did after in order to complete the research. I earned a total of 828,845 XP given that the evolutions were 140,000 in total. Also, during the 12 hours, I spun 276 Pokestops. And possibly the most impressive stat of all, I caught not one, not two, but 34 Shinies over the entire 12 hours, making that by far my most productive Shiny day ever. I did all of those amazing things by following the advice that I gave in my prep video. That'll be in the upper right hand corner. While the Kanto Tour event is over, a lot of the advice still works for similar events in the future, whether it be community days or Go Fest, or if we just happen to have another Pokemon Go Tour. Now we're gonna go over each of the 34 shinies that I got. I started off with a Cantonian Sand Shrew. I was really happy because this is the second one I caught, meaning I could evolve one of them, and that ended up being the one that I caught that day into a Cantonian Sand Slash in order to try and complete my living decks. Next, I caught my first ever Shiny Bell Sprout. This was one of the ones that I was really hoping to get during the event, so I was happy that I caught it so early. Also, it's a golden shiny and those look amazing, so I was really happy to get it. I then got another golden shiny Cantonian Geodude. This is actually my fifth shiny Kanto Geodude within Pokemon Go. I've had a weird relationship with shiny Geodude because I've caught it in like three different games. I got it in Pokemon Quest, that like cube mobile app that they had, and I also managed to get it in Pokemon Let's Go. So it's kind of cool that across all of these different games I've been able to get at least one, and in Pokemon Go's case, five shiny Geodude. Next, I got two Rhyhorns in a row. I did miss the original community day for this because I was at Mardi Gras back way at the beginning in the before times at the beginning of 2020, but I did manage to catch three of them during the December community day. So it wasn't a completely new or needed shiny, but I was still happy to get them because I really like how they look. Then I got a shiny pincer. I already had a shiny for that Pokemon, but it's a pretty unique Pokemon to have a shiny for. So I, I was still really happy about it. Then I got a shiny Drowsy, which I loved. I did already have a shiny Shadow Drowsy, but I didn't have a normal one, so I was really happy to finally check that one off my list. Drowsy means a lot to me, one, because I, I love the color scheme, just the pink looks absolutely amazing, and Chicago used to be full of them during the Gen 1 only days, so it's kind of like a cool nostalgic little throwback to that. This was also when I had bowling practice, so I caught this one on my incense as well as the next couple, so I was it was really cool that I was able to be able to do that. Then I caught one that I had never gotten any form of before, Shiny Venonat. I was really happy to finally get this one. I love the blue eyes, I think that it looks amazing, and I can't wait to hopefully catch another one so that I can evolve one into Shiny Venomo. Then I caught another one from bowling, which was a shiny Machop. This was a community day one, and I did get pretty lucky on that community day, but I'm still happy to have it because it's a green shiny, and I really like those green shinies. I think that it looks very nice. Then I caught my first shiny Kanto Meowth. I have like four shiny Alolan Meowths by this point, and I finally got the Kantonian one, so I'm really happy that I finally caught that just to check it off my list. 
So I believe that this is the final bowling shiny. I caught my first shiny Hitmonchan. This is a brand new shiny for this event, so I was really happy and stoked to get it right as it was released. On the way home in the car, I caught my second shiny pincer, or my third of all time. You know what? I think that this is going to be a pattern. Let's let's start a counter for how many shiny pincer we catch during the event. Then I got my second shiny Cantonian Meowth. I was really happy because that meant that I could evolve one into a shiny Persian. I did actually manage to catch this one while we were in the drive through of McDonald's. Happy Mill Pokemon card video coming very soon. And I was really happy that I caught it so then I could just check another shiny off and evolve one. Even though the shiny doesn't have that much difference with the normal one. While still in the drive through I got my second shiny bell sprout, meaning I could evolve one into a weeping bell. Once again, another one of the ones where there isn't that much of a difference, but I'm still happy to get it because it means that I'm slowly completing my shiny living decks. Then, right after the shiny bell sprout, I got my first ever shiny doduo. I love getting shinies back to back. I think that it's always so cool when it happens. It's just always a special moment. And I love the green shinies and it's a brand new shiny. So it was absolutely amazing to catch that. Then I caught a shiny Pidgey, which was actually my third of all time, meaning I can fully complete that family. I love the way that shiny Pidgeot looks. It looks absolutely amazing. Even when it's mega evolved, it's got like that purple strip. Looks so cool, and I'm so happy that I could complete that for my living decks. Then, another pincer. Update the counter. <laughs> then I got a shiny Weedle, which is another Community Day shiny, but it's also a golden shiny. I'm pretty sure I've actually caught some since the Community Day, which means I have a lot of them, but I was still happy to catch it because it's another shiny, and just adding to the count. Then I caught another Community Day shiny, but this one was a bit less recent, so I don't mind as much. It is the shiny Bulbasaur. Then I got my first ever Nidoran male. I already have more than enough females to complete that shiny family, and I already had a Nidorino shiny, but it had the party hat on it because it was from that uh, raid day event. So this is my first ever shiny Nidoran male. I'm so happy to get it, just another cool shiny to check off the list. Then I got my third and final shiny bell sprout of the event, meaning in one day I had caught enough to fully complete the line for my shiny decks. Shiny victory bell looks so cool and I'm so happy that I was able to complete it. This may be my favorite shiny that I caught from the entire event solely because I got to evolve it. A shiny Cantonian Vulpix. This was my second one that I've caught. Shiny Nine Tails looks absolutely incredible. I think it may be one of my favorite shinies from this generation. It just looks so cool. Then I got another Golden Community Day shiny, which was Shiny Magikarp. After that, I got an Abra. Then I got another Community Day shiny, which was a Ghastly. And then another Community Day shiny, which was another Abra. Then I got possibly my coolest shiny of the event, shiny ditto i still can't believe that they actually released that i'm a bit sad that they didn't release it into a wild and just put it in a quest i would have hoped that in addition to the quest they put it in the wild but i'm still happy that i was able to get one it's still really rare and i'm happy that it's finally in the game then i got my second and my third shiny hit munchan I'm really happy, they look super cool, especially with the blue gloves and their brand new shiny, so I was super stoked to get those. Then I caught my third shiny, Cantonian Meowth. <sighs> Update the counter. Then I caught my second shiny Magikarp. This was with about 10 minutes left in the event. I was just at a local quad stop, I had it all lured up, I was just frantically clicking on everything and it was super cool that I was able to get this so late in the event. <sighs> Still a shiny. <laughs> this is the last shiny pincer though, I promise. And now for the 34th and final shiny Pokemon of this video, Shiny Eevee. This is another Community Day shiny, but it's still super cool. I'm really happy about this for 
three different reasons. One, I love shiny EV, it looks super cool. Two, it's really good IV, so it, it's absolutely amazing, and I can't wait to see what I evolve it into. And three, I caught this with like, as time expired, like I was spraying down the street, just randomly clicking everything, trying to get at least one more shiny, and I randomly found this right as time expired. I caught it, and it stayed shiny, and I'm so happy. It was absolutely insane. I can't believe I got it. And it got me to 34, which is an insane count for this event. So there they are, all 34 shiny Pokemon that I caught during this event. I still can't believe I got this many shinies, but then again, I did catch almost 1,500 Pokemon. Well, I'm gonna guess I encountered between 1,600 and 1,800 Pokemon, meaning that the shiny rate was right around 1 in 50, which is pretty similar to GoFest. Some people have said that the shiny rate should be a lot higher, more like community day levels, but I disagree. I think that the shiny rate is perfect. At the event, you pay for the increased shiny rate for a ton of different Pokemon, not just the one that you get for free from Community Day. And after Community Day, the shiny is essentially ruined because everyone has 20 of them. So it, it, it's just kind of, it just kind of ruins them. I feel like with these sort of events, having them still be kind of rare, and making you still have to work for them keeps them special, which is how shinies should be. I do wish that the battle NPCs weren't a huge part of the timed research because that was kind of annoying and did take a lot of time away from going out and catching Pokemon. However, they were really helpful for getting Pokeballs, especially when I was running low towards the end of the event. My only other complaint was I was a bit sad that none of the regionals were spawning wild. It would have been nice to have them as rare incense spawns so then we didn't have to spend raid passes or waste time raiding in order to be able to catch them all. Everything else about this event I really liked. It was absolutely amazing. The raids being on every single gym all day was super cool because that enabled you to get every single one of the raid bosses. As I mentioned before, having the NPCs was really helpful for when you were just running low on Pokeballs, and it definitely allowed you to get ahead on Pokeballs in ways that Pokestops really can't. I am a bit sad that they removed the NPCs. I was kind of hoping that they would keep them in, but it's still cool that they had them in, at least just for the event. As you can see here, uh, here's me just scrolling through all of the collection challenges, showing you that I've completed every single one of them. It's still crazy that I was able to complete all 150 Pokemon, except for Mew, obviously, in just that one event. It's really cool that I was able to do it. I'm happy I was able to complete it. And yeah, while I was evolving, I was able to do a few hundred percent IV evolutions, including this Wigglytuff from a Jigglypuff I just got like a week ago, as well as this Blastoise, which I've been holding on to for a long time. I was really happy that I was able to get the 100% IV with the special Blastoise Community Day move. Beyond that, I'm still working on getting the Mew, but I will definitely update you as soon as I get that. Don't forget to subscribe for more amazing Pokemon content like this. Like this video if you want me to do more, and comment below what you want me to do next. As always, don't forget to enjoy life and have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.